Today's lesson is about the definition of a complex number. Our learning target is today, I can perform operation of complex numbers, add, subtract, and multiply by using what I already know about like terms and the definition of i, where i equals the square root of negative one. I found a video that has some really good information to just do an intro for complex numbers, so I'm gonna have us watch that first, and then we'll go through the lesson. off with Bombelli's discovery that if he allowed the square root of minus one to be its own number, he could solve problems that had been stumping mathematicians for decades. Despite the usefulness of his discovery, Bombelli and other mathematicians generally regarded it as a hack. After all, what could it possibly mean to take the square root of a negative number? Just like our friends zero and negative numbers before, the square root of negative one was generally regarded with suspicion because it didn't correspond to anything people could think of in the real world. For this reason, the square root of minus one was given the terrible names imaginary or impossible. A century or so later, Euler began using the symbol i to indicate the square root of negative one, making the algebra less clunky. Unfortunately, the name imaginary stuck around, and that's still what we call these numbers today. In response, everything on the original number line gets the name real. When we put together a real and an imaginary number, we obtain what we today call a complex number. What is remarkable about this time period is that although imaginary and complex numbers were used in calculations and derivations, the deeper meaning behind these numbers was left undiscovered for over 200 years after Bombelli's death. Before we dive into this deeper meaning, let's think about i algebraically for a moment. If we raise i to higher and higher powers, it doesn't get bigger as other numbers would. We know i squared is negative 1 from the definition. And if we keep multiplying i by itself, we see a pattern that repeats every four multiplications, over and over and over and over. Hold on to that fact for 90 seconds. Let's return to our friend the number line. Remember that all the numbers we know about show up here, except imaginary numbers. They are nowhere to be found. If we think back to our original problem with the roots of negative numbers, we can visualize this using the number line. Remember the issue we had was finding a number that when multiplied by itself would yield a negative. To see this more clearly, we'll use arrows instead of dots to indicate numbers. Multiplying a positive by itself maintains direction on the number line. It stays positive. If we multiply by a negative, we flip directions or rotate 180 degrees. Squaring a negative lands us in the positive numbers because we start on the left side with our first negative and rotate 180 degrees when we multiply by the second negative. So there's no way to land on a negative number when squaring. A positive squared results in a positive, and a negative squared requires starting in the negative territory, and when we multiply by the other negative, we arrive back in the positive numbers. So what we need is something in the middle, a number that when we multiply by it only rotates 90 degrees, not 180 degrees as negatives do. This is exactly what imaginary numbers do. i squared is negative 1, meaning that the first i puts us 90 degrees from the positive real numbers, and multiplying by i rotates us 90 degrees further, exactly where we want it to be, firmly in negative number territory. Back to that fact you were hanging on to. Since multiplying by i corresponds to one 90 degree rotation, if we place our imaginary axis at a right angle to our number line, our algebra will perfectly fit with our geometry. If we start with the real number one and multiply by i, algebraically we get i which geometrically corresponds to a 90 degree rotation from 1 to i. Multiplying by i again results in i squared, which by definition is minus 1 and again matches a 90 degree rotation from i. As we keep raising i to higher and higher powers, we keep rotating around with our values repeating every fourth power, just as they did algebraically. So the big insight here is that imaginary numbers do not exist apart from the real numbers, but right on top of them, hiding in a perpendicular dimension. This is the deeper meaning behind imaginary numbers. They aren't just some random extra number or hack. They are the natural extension of our number system from one dimension to two. Numbers are two-dimensional. And what's even more remarkable is that if we accept this, that numbers have a hidden dimension, we end up not only with a more complete mathematics, but with incredibly powerful tools for science and engineering. Next time, we'll show how and why thinking about numbers this way is useful.
Okay, the whole series is really good, but it's Welch Labs about this imaginary numbers, and we'll watch more later when we get to vectors farther in the year. Okay, so today's lesson is just how to use these numbers first. Now we have an idea where they come from, and actually they've only really truly been defined in the 1800s. So these are this is relatively new math. Um, so we have a unit that we created called I, that is the square root of negative one. And the applications in the real world of this are in science and engineering. So physics and electricity, me being an electrical engineer, I used um, imaginary numbers on a daily basis for 20 years. Okay, so the definition of a complex number is if A and B are real numbers, then the number A plus BI is a complex number said to be in standard form. Okay, so this is big. Standard form is A plus BI. If B equals zero, then the number A plus BI is just A is a real number. If B does not equal zero, then A plus BI is called a complex number. A number in the form bi, where b is not equal to zero, is called pure imaginary form. And equality of complex numbers, the complex number a plus bi and c plus di, written in standard form, are equal to each other if and only if a is equal to c and b is equal to d. Okay, so let's do a couple examples here. Okay, so here is an extension of yesterday's lesson where we had just only talked about the real number system. So the real number system is the A portion and the imaginary part is the BI portion. So now we're talking about the complex number system, A plus BI. All right, so let's do, I'm going to do two examples, then I'm going to have you guys do some. So adding and subtracting complex numbers, perform the operation, and write the result in standard form. I always want standard form. So A plus BI. So I'm going to start, I'm going to rewrite this by adding the real parts and the imaginary parts together. So my real parts are three and two and my imaginary parts are negative i and three i. So I have three plus two plus negative i plus three i. So I'm just combining like terms. Three plus two is five and negative i plus three i is two i. So I'm in standard form, A plus B, I. Number two, this is an example where I have a negative one outside of parentheses that I need to distribute on my terms inside the parentheses. When I distribute a negative one, I'm just changing the sign. So this is three plus two minus three I plus negative five, plus i. So now I'm combining like terms. So 3 plus 2 is 5, minus 5 is 0. So I'm left with negative 3i plus i, which is negative 2i. I don't have to write 0 plus 2i. Okay, so that was a I do. I want you guys to try 2. Can you do 3 and 4? <clears throat> 3 and 4? Can you pause the video, work out three and four, and then start it up and check and see how you did. Okay, so first you wanna distribute the negative one outside the parentheses here. So one plus two i minus four minus two i, and combining like terms, I get one plus negative four is negative three and 2i minus 2i totals 0, so I just have minus 3. I also have a negative 1 here that I need to distribute. 
So I have 3 plus 2i plus 4 minus i minus 7 minus i. So 3 plus 4 is 7. Minus 7 is 0. And I get 2i minus i minus i. So overall, I just end up with 0. OK, in the video we watched, we talked about evaluating numbers to any power. So there's a rotating group of numbers. So i, negative 1, negative i, and 1. So I really want you to think about this and figure out what the pattern is and then evaluate what is i to the 16th, i to the 27th, i to the 123rd, and i to the 0. Can you pause the video? I want you to write down what the pattern is and then how can I solve these? Okay, so we can see the pattern repeats every four powers. So it is i, negative 1, negative i, positive 1. Every four powers. Okay, so I could divide the power by 4 and look at what the remainder is. <laughs> So if I look at 16, if I take 16 and divide that by 4, 4 goes into 16 four times, and I have a remainder of 0. So I'm looking at 0. So if I would go back 1, wouldn't be i at 0 be over here? So this would be i to the 0 power. So that equals, this is a i to the fourth. <clears throat> so this would equal 1. OK, so if I take 4 into 27, 6 times 4 is 24. I have 3 left. So i cubed is negative i. hundred four into 123. 4 times 3 is 12. So I am looking at the remainder of 3. So i cubed is negative i. And we said i to the 0 is 1. And this is the same thing as i to the 4th. But I also should remember that um, anything to the 0 power is zero except zero. So that's another thing. Anything to the i to the fourth, <clears throat> anything to the zero power, I to, any to the thing to the zero power is one except zero to the zero power is undefined. Okay. So two more examples for me and two more for you. All right. So this time I'm going to do multiplying. Again, I want to write my result in standard form. So standard form is a plus b i. Okay, so multiplying, I am going to multiply what's outside my parentheses to the inside. So 4i times negative 1 is negative 4i. And 4i times 5i is 20i squared. But I know that i squared equals negative 1. So this is really going to be negative 4i plus 20 times negative 1 
which is negative 20 minus 4i. So I want the real part first and the imaginary part second because I want to be in a plus bi form. Number 10, I have 3 plus 2i quantity squared. So expanding this, I get 3 plus 2i times 3 plus 2i. So this is a double distribution. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 2i is 6i. 2i times 3i is 6i. And 2i times 2i is 4i squared. Again, I am going to substitute i squared with negative 1. So I have 9 plus 12i plus 4 times negative 1. So 9 minus 4 is 5 plus 12i. And I am in standard form, a plus bi. So I'd like you to try the next two. And you pause the video, try these two, and let me know what you get. Okay, so how did you do? So if I multiply by distributing from what's outside the parentheses to inside, I get negative 10 plus 15i. And here's another double distribute. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times negative 2i is minus 6i. 2i times 3 is plus 6i. And 2i times negative 2i is minus 4i squared. So I want to substitute i squared with negative 1. I'm going to combine like terms, so I get 9 and minus 6i and plus 6i total 0. So this is minus 4 times negative 1. So this is 9 plus 4, which is 13. Okay, we are done with the lesson.